Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. In this video, we're going to look at a couple examples showing how to find the length of a curve or its arc length via integration. And there's basically one formula that you need to memorize in order to compute arc length. It just changes slightly whether or not you're integrating with respect to x or y. And we'll do an example of each for you to see. So arc length is definite integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared integrated with respect to x. That's if your curve is a function of x. And then just look over here. If your function, if your curve is a function of y, then you just have g prime of y squared and you'll integrate with respect to y dx dy squared, same thing as g prime of y dy. And we call it c to d instead of a to b. If you want like a full lecture showing where the formula comes from, I'll link it here. But I'm just going to jump into some examples right now. So first one, find the length of the curve y equals 1 sixth x cubed plus 1 over 2x from x equals 1 to x equals 5. This is a classic problem where there's this little factoring um, slick maneuver you have to do in order to be able to integrate. And then once you know it, you'll be a pro anytime you see it. I like to get everything ready to integrate before I write out my full integral. So I like to take the derivative, square it, add one, clean it up as much as possible, and then write out my full integral, okay? And before I take the derivative, I'm gonna rewrite my function y so it's a little more obvious how to differentiate. So I'm gonna write this as one half x to the negative first, that's it. Okay, now it's derivative time. So dy dx, I'll go slowly for now, just as you're warming up. One sixth, I'm gonna bring the three down. Now I have x squared plus one half times negative one times x to the negative second, yes? Oh good, so now we're left with one half x squared minus one over two x squared. Okay, so that's our derivative, that's dy dx. That's not what we integrate. What we integrate is the square root of one plus dy dx squared. So let's see what happens when we take it a step further. This is gonna be one plus, I'm squaring one half x squared minus one over two x squared, like that. Okay, so let's see here. We're gonna have one plus Remember, when you square a binomial like this, you square the first term, so that would give us 1 fourth x to the fourth minus, keep the sign the same. Then you multiply these two terms by each other and double it. So I'll do that off to the side. 1 half x squared times 1 over 2x squared what happens? Well, the x squareds cancel, boop, boop, and I'm just left with 1 fourth. But what's my middle term? Two times that, yes? Good. Plus, then we square the last term, so that would be 1 over 4x squared. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. I've got 1 plus 1 fourth x to the fourth minus a half plus 1 over 4x squared. And this will, if you're given a problem in this little form, it'll always work out so that you have a negative 1 half in the middle. And then you can combine that with the 1 and you have a positive 1 half. And I'm actually going to put the positive 1 half in the middle. You'll see why. So we've got 1 fourth x to the fourth plus 1 half plus 1 over 4x squared. Now I'm not going to write out my integral just yet. Remember, we're going to have to integrate the square root of this, and I'm not happy with how it's looking right now. However, there's a trick. You need to recognize that this is a perfect square trinomial, and it can be factored. <gasps> how? You must be wondering. Well, I want you to take a peek up ahead above. Remember when we multiplied out the derivative? What did we get? What did we get? Let me erase some of the highlighting so you can see what happened. 
when I multiplied it out, I had 1 fourth x to the fourth minus a half plus 1 over 4x squared. And that's nearly identical to the three terms that we have here. What's the only difference? The only difference is that instead of a negative 1 half, I now have a positive 1 half. So what that means is it's going to factor just like dy dx, except I'll have addition between the two terms. So this is going to be 1 half x squared plus 1 over 2x squared. Take a second and think about it. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, I would have never noticed that in a million years. That's okay. I'm telling you now. So next time you see it, you'll notice it. That's it. You know, don't feel badly. There are some people who don't need to be told these little hints. Good for them. But otherwise, you can just keep practicing and you'll do it effortlessly as well. Now I'm really thrilled <laughs> to integrate this because if I have a big radical sign, right, then it'll just cancel with the squared, my exponent. So great. We're ready to set up our integral. Limits of integration are 1 to 5. So here we go. So arc length is going to be definite integral from 1 to 5. I have square root of 1 half x squared plus 1 over 2x squared squared dx. Let me add a page because we're running out of space. Okay. And then from here, I can just get rid of the radical sign and cancel out the exponent here. These two undo each other. So we have definite integral from 1 to 5. Well, you know, technically it's absolute value of everything inside, but on 1 to 5, everything's positive, so I'm not worried. Okay. And then let's see. We've got 1 half x squared plus 1 over 2x squared dx. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take out a 1 half. Mm -hmm. Can't I do that? Take out a 1 half from the whole thing? It'll make life nicer. 1 half definite integral from 1 to 5. And then now I have x squared plus, I'm going to write this as x to the negative second, okay? That way I'm ready to integrate dx. So we've got 1 half times uh, antiderivative of, excuse me, x squared is 1 third x cubed x to the negative second, add one, divide by the new exponent. So it would be negative x to the negative first. I'm evaluating this from one to five. So let's see, we're gonna have one half times one third times five cubed. So that's 125 over three minus five to the negative first is one fifth. That's the upper limit minus one third minus one, okay? And then from there, common denominator is 15. Mm -hmm. So here we go, we've got one half times, so 125 times five, let's see. I Just confirming, 625 minus three, if I multiply this guy by three, yes, by five, by five, and this by 15. So let's see, I already got the minus three, then minus five plus 15 over 15. So we've got 625 minus 8 plus 15, 632 over 15, and I've got that 1 half in the front. So I can cancel 1 half with 632, and 632 is going to become 316. So our final answer, 316 over 15 units. Okay one-dimensional answer because it's arc length. All right, you'll see this same sort of um, integral arc length problem repeatedly. The only thing that will change 
are like the mix of coefficients and exponents here, but you'll be doing the same sort of factoring maneuver where you have that negative one half right here that after you add it to the one, you're left with a positive one half and then you just refactor. It's in every book, it's in every homework section. It's nothing new. So just remind yourself that so you don't get so freaked out. Okay, I got another one for you. This time let's integrate with respect to y. So x equals 2 thirds times y minus 1 to the 3 halves. And we're going to find the arc length from y equals 16 to 25. So you can already see it's set up for us. x is a function of y. The limits are in terms of y. Why would you not want to integrate with respect to y? So let's find the derivative dx dy. Hmm, somebody loves us because look, you have 2 thirds times 3 halves times y minus 1 now to the 1 half, and then derivative of y minus 1 is just 1. So 2 thirds, 3 halves cancel. I'm just left with y minus 1 to the 1 half. That's not what I'm integrating though, remember? I have 1 plus dx dy squared. So that's going to be 1 plus y minus 1 to the 1 half squared. Oh, so lovely. This is 1 plus y minus 1, which is just y. This is what dreams are made of. So arc length is going to be definite integral from 16 to 25, square root of y dy. So square root of y, that's y to the 1 half. If I integrate, I'm going to add 1 to the exponent. So it'll be y to the 3 halves, divide by the new exponent and then evaluate this from 16 to 25. Okay, so we've got 2 thirds times 25 to the 3 halves minus 16 to the 3 halves. We don't need a calculator for this. Oh, no, no, no. So 25 to the 3 halves, you take the square root of 25 and then cube it. So 5 cubed is 125. Same thing, 16 to the 3 halves. You take the square root, because you have a 2 in the denominator, 4, and then cube it, that's 64. <gasps> Beautiful. So 125 minus 64, I want to say it's 61. Let me think. Yes, good. So this is going to be 2 thirds times 61 which is just 122 over 3. All right, very nice. We doing okay? Last example, I think is a little clever, so I like doing it. Find a curve through the point negative 4, 1, whose length integral from y equals 1 to 2 is given by the following. So they've already set up the formula for us to find the arc length. They want us to find the original curve, find the function. And I notice here we're integrating with respect to y, so probably we're going to find the original curve x as a function of y. Okay. Well, what do we know about this arc length formula? If we're integrating with respect to y, this is c to d, right, times the square root of 1 plus dx dy squared dy. So I'm trying to figure out what the function is, x of y. I have its derivative squared. Maybe that's going to help me. So let's look here. dx dy squared is equal to, instead of 4 over y cubed, I'm going to write it as 4y to the negative third. And then if I take the square root of both sides, that means dx dy is equal to 2y to the negative 3 halves. I didn't put plus or minus because notice the limits are from 1 to 2, so nothing's going to be negative. All right, this is basically a differential equation, right? I can move the dy over to the other side, so dx equals 2y to the negative 3 halves dy. And then I can integrate both sides. And we're going to have x equals, if I 
integrate y to the negative 3 halves. I'm going to add 1 to the exponent. So it would be y to the negative 1 half and divide by that exponent. So I would divide by negative 1 half. That's the same as multiplying by negative 2. And I already have a 2 in the front and then plus c. So I can see right now x is equal to negative 4 y to the negative 1 half plus c. Good. How can I find c? Well, they gave me a little extra info I haven't used yet. It told me that the curve goes through the point 4, negative 1. So I'm going to substitute in negative 4 for x and 1 for y and find c. So x is negative 4, y was 1. And then I can see if I add 4 to both sides, c is just 0. Oh. Okay, so then we have x equals negative 4y to the negative 1 half. And then I would write x as a function of y and then maybe rewrite things so it looks a bit better. So x of y is negative 4 over rad y. So that's the function or that is the curve whose arc length was given by the formula in the problem. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I have full lecture videos for Calculus 2, as well as 1 and 3, pre-calc, trig, intermediate algebra, lots of stuff. And check me out also on Instagram and TikTok. I have lots of fun over there at Math TV with Professor V. All right. See you soon, guys.